Hello, welcome to another how-to video. It's Dave Davis, CTO of DVS, uh, brought to you today by Seagate Hard Drive uh, Technologies. Proud to have them on board. So what we're gonna show you today is the long-awaited IP PoE speaker solution. Hooray, I hear you say. So now we have that solution. We've started selling it. I know it's available through other people as well, but why would you buy it through anyone else? We'd buy it through us. Hence why we're doing a video so we can show you how it works. So Netgenium, they make IP PoE based IP speakers. So we've got three set up in the demo room, which we'll go and show you shortly. We've got a column speaker, projection speaker, and a ceiling speaker. So different speakers with different applications, which will suit your needs. You plug them into a PoE switch, they get powered up the network and the NVR can talk to the IP speakers to announce um, two predetermined messages. And that's either through motion detection or through alarm input trigger. First thing we have to do, very important, we're browsing to the NVR, go to configuration, and we need to check that the NVR, iSeries NVR only currently has this integration. So we go to system, system settings, and we have to make sure that that firmware for GUI 4 is that version and build. Currently it's a customized firmware, and we will look to put this into a baseline moving forward because we believe it will be proved to be very popular, but currently it is customized. So what we need to do, update our NVR or downdate it to this version here, which will give us the Netgenium IP speaker bolt-on. So what we do then is I open my Netgenium folder, the first instance, and once we've installed the NGX control um, app, I've got a license to make it the plus version, but we'll open up the Netgenium app. Yes, we'll run that. Wrong one. Uh, open up the shortcut. I got two versions on here. There we go. So first thing we have to do is, when we open the app, I've already set my speakers up column, projection, and ceiling. But the first instance, you'll go into configuration, and then modules, type in the password, Netgenium. There is full paperwork on how to set this up, or you can just watch this video. Click on OK. So that brings up a second window now. So I've got three speakers, as I said. So I've got the ceiling, column, and projection speaker. If I want to add a new one, I leave it on new, I give it a name, and I have to be testing. I give it an IP address, 192.168.1.3.180 for instance. Password is Netgenium, and the ver uh, verify password is Netgenium. That's what we use as default, but you can obviously change that. You click add, and as long as there's a speaker on the end of that, you will add it in, and you'll get it from this drop down list. So if I select one I've already added in, ceiling you'll see ip address password there if i click browse speaker it takes me straight to a web browser where i can start checking the speaker so software serial numbers model numbers uptime amplifier status and you've got the setup so you can start doing lots of things within the speaker itself volume controls ip tele telephony you've got utilities you've got the maintenance there's lots of things you can do within the speaker which we're not going to run through to through to through blah, 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 can't even speak we, we're not going to run through today um, because we're just here to show you how we can talk to a high vision nvr these are quite separate issue uh, quite separate things that we don't really use functions that we don't use within high vision so we go back if you just close that down go back to our app so we've set our speakers up and the nvr will support speaking up to 32 ip speakers at a time so it's well it's, one to 32 what we do then is we put them into a group you don't you can make as as many or as little groups as you want but it's easy to make groups so what we can do we've added ceiling column and projection speaker there and i've made a group called test and i put all three of those into a group already so i can actually talk to a speaker group through this software with the, those speakers in there but you could break it up like north south east west um you know, building one, building two, building three, whatever. It's easy for demonstration that we go um, build it up this way. HD Audio Setup. So this is the gateway, the audio gateway, which I'll show you later. So currently, the NVR will speak 
to the IP PoE speaker that's on the same network. So it's important that the IP speakers are in the same IP address range as the NVR or the routers in or the routing is in place to allow that to talk. Um, for purposes of testing, they're on the same IP PoE switch uh, in my demo room. Um, so the currently, the, what how this works is if motion is detected or an alarm input is triggered on the NVR, we can speak to one or many IP PoE speakers. If you want IMIC, Sentinel, or the app, the client software, IMS 4200, IMS 4500 on the phone, or High Connect to speak to it, you need to use the separate IP audio gateway. It's a separate PoE device, which takes audio out from the NVR and then distributes it to the IP speakers. We'll show you that on, a, on another video. Um, for purposes of the day, we're using the NVR speaking to the actual speakers themselves. But that's where you set up the interface. And then what you have to do, I don't know if you noticed, but in my NetGenium file there, I had two files called NetGenium Alarm, NetGenium Motion. So the motion, I've just made two WAV files. The motion one is what gets played to the speakers when motion is triggered on the NVR, it'll trigger the corresponding IP speakers with that pre-recorded message. An alarm is what gets triggered when an alarm input goes off. Pretty simple. You can make those messages say whatever you like. They need to be in WAV file format. Um, but basically the one will say alarm triggered, uh, lockdown in process, please leave site. And the other one will say motion detected. This is a height vision recording system, etc., etc., etc. So two different messages which you can make yourself. They're WAV files and then you upload them. So they're pre-determined. Um, they're not ones you generally use for but for purposes of testing, that's fine. What we'll see then is, and uh, here, the audio file upload, you must then select all three, go to file, then you select the alarm one, open, and then upload, and that will give you a percentage then, up to 100%. Then you go to file, motion, or alarm, whichever one, click open, click upload. So you've uploaded the motion detection file and the alarm detection file. Without doing that through this NGX control, if we, it doesn't matter what we do on the NVR, the file will not be played on the speaker. The reason being, this software app uploads the two files to each speaker that we just did there, and the audio file is held on the speaker itself. When the NVR is triggered, it tells the speaker to play the relevant audio file. So the audio file is held on the speaker, not the NVR. So we use the NetGenium control app to send that audio file to the speaker. Pretty straightforward. That's all you have to do within that app to get this to work. So we can close that down and we can close that down. And we can definitely close that down. What we do then, back in the NVR, so we've set our um, IP speakers up using the using the uh, tool under network you'll see there under network we now get to see 1 to 32 IP speakers and you can do this locally on the GUI or through the web browser but you will actually see now we've got 1 to 32 so if I go to speaker 1 you've got project speaker name so I've got projection speaker 2 is column speaker 3 is ceiling so we give it the username and password, NetGenium, NetGenium. The default port is 3743. We can change all that, you know, should we need. But you basically then choose your IP speaker. You put the IP address which corresponds to that speaker. Each IP speaker has its own IP address. And you select the binding camera to it. So by binding camera, IP speaker 1 is bound to the 3 megapixel XIR turret. You can do two cameras to one speaker. So if the motion detection is triggered, it actually, hi, some of you are more um, observant of you will realize I've just had to quickly move into another room. Um, I had to stop the other one because a lot of people came in and were disturbing my uh, brilliant work. So we've moved into the quiet haven of my demo room. So as we were saying, under the basic settings there, we've got the IP speakers that we've added in. So we've got one, two, and three, username, password, and the first and second binding camera. Now the binding camera means if you're going to use motion detection, you have to bind it to the two cameras or at least one camera that you want. So IP speaker one within the software is my uh, projection, but instead of speaker name, you could give it like a, a location and where it's installed. Um, first binding camera would be the three megapixel XIR turret. That's what 
camera would trigger this speaker on motion and then you can assign another one to it same with speaker 2 we've got the 3 megapixel bullet and with speaker 3 we've got the 2 megapixel small dome so three different cameras three different IP speakers all will trigger a different one that's so you go through up to 32 cameras and then obviously two cameras per one to bind it so what we can do then um, under advanced settings so that's okay we've already set that so what we do is we go straight to event under motion detection now what you'll see is if I choose these cameras wait for the image to load so if I go to 3 megapixel XIR turret I've already set the detection box in there uh, so when I walk down there, um, so it's set on, detection box is drawn, I'm in schedule 24-7, linkage method is trigger IP speaker 1. Okay, so when the motion on this camera is triggered, it will send an email, but it will also trigger IP speaker 1. Now, the same with 3 megapixel bullet camera. Detection area down there. I'm in schedule 24-7, linkage method. Not only will it send an email, but it'll trigger IP speaker 2 audio. Remember the audio file we sent for motion? That's what will be triggered on that speaker. And the same with the 2 megapixel small dome. That's set to trigger IP speaker 3. And then my area set on there. So, straightforward enough so far. What we can also do is the same with alarm inputs. Now, if I go to alarm input, I've set alarm input two on the recorder. I've just got a cable by the side of me. So I've set, turned alarm input two on 24 seven, and the linkage method is trigger three IP speakers. So when I touch the uh, contact together in a minute, all three speakers will announce the same message which was the alarm message we uploaded earlier. And the motion one we uploaded earlier would be played on motion detection, but to a specific speaker. So if I, I don't know if you can hear this, but I'll put the speaker, the microphone by there, pointing that way. If I trigger the alarm input now. Motion detected in unauthorized area. Motion Okay, so they're all triggering it. All three are triggered, so what I could do is unselect two of them. So we trigger them back. What we'll do now is we'll do the motion. So I'm going to go and get the GoPro and we'll go and have a look at the speakers and do the actual triggering of all the IP audio. See you in a minute. Okay, so we've in the demo room now. So we've got the IP PoE ceiling mount speaker. It's a nice little unit there. Got the column. Motion detected in unauthorized area by <laughs> right, IQ. So you've got the column speaker there, so it's external rated, lovely, nice, heavy, well-made kit. And it's got the brackets that can adjust it and uh, fit it that way or that way. Motion detected in unauthorized area by height camera. <laughs> We've got the projection speaker here. Again, external rated, nice bit of kit, nice weight to it, nice construction. Um, brilliant for speech and music is a uh, much better than a horn and motion detected in an <laughs> we've got the audio gateway which we were talked about earlier so this is the device where we take the audio out from the nvr and then we distribute it to the ip speakers there um, that sits in the middle currently the nvr can't do the audio transmission directly to the speakers through the talk down facility so we use the audio gateway. 
They're all connected to the same IPPoE switch for testing. That gets linked to the iSeries NVR, which we were showing you earlier here. And what you'll see if you go into the browser there, under network, IP speaker, so on the local GUI, you've got all of the settings which I showed you for the web browser, but it is easier to set it for the web browser. Um, and it's easy for us to support it. And if you go to event, you've got motion detection. If we select the one of the cameras, which is that one there, the linkage action is the same. Let's set it on the right hand side there. Or you go into alarm input, as we said there, second one, select that. And we've got the linkage action on that to trigger all three IP speakers. So nice and straightforward. Come over there. Back to light view. So if I put the GoPro there, these GoPros are amazing. If you haven't got one or use one, seriously go and get one. Now we've got an alarm input trigger here. So this alarm input trigger would be your alarm input if I trigger that. Motion detected in unauthorized areas like high camera. If I put all three speakers are set the trigger, you can see it's quite loud, we can adjust the volume. And the alarm input by the detected. This building is in lockdown. Please follow lockdown procedures. Alarm input by the NVR detected. This building is in lockdown. Please follow lockdown procedures. So that's the alarm input. If I walk down to the end here, you'll see the motion detection one trigger. So two different cameras, two different triggers, so those speakers could be away from each other and would, would then allow for different speakers to announce different messages at different times that's local to that area. Again, if I trigger it. Motion detected area. That is it my friends. So hopefully um, you gained a lot from that. Keep following, keep subscribing, keep sharing, keep asking questions. We'll see you on the next how-to video. Take care, see you soon.